Adobe InDesign allows you to add interactive elements to infographics, and in this video, I'll show you how. In this InDesign tutorial, I'll go over how to add animation to a bar chart and set open and close actions using the Buttons and Forms panel. This technique is great if you're working on an interactive presentation or a digital catalog. So let's jump right into this video and start creating. I'm working on a corporate brochure layout here and in the bottom left hand corner of my page I have a bar graph. Now this is the bar graph we'll be adding the animation and interactivity to. The first step is adding the animation to all of these bars, all six of them here. So let's open our animation panel and much like I always do I like to tear it off and place it close to the area I'm working on. Tuck that back. By the way if you don't have animation and you're new to InDesign go up to window interactive and open up animation. With the animation panel here, select all six of those bars. Now you don't have to add the presets one by one. The cool thing in InDesign is you can select multiple objects, in this case, the bars, and under the preset dropdown, let's choose fly in from bottom. You can see in the animation preview here, the butterfly moving upwards, that's showing you the direction in which the objects will appear when it's animated. And in this case, remember, we chose fly in from bottom. Now the event, all of them are gonna happen on page load and that's okay for now, we'll change that in just a few moments. The duration will be one second, go down a little bit further and we don't wanna fade in. We want these to come in with a smooth transition. Of course, if you want a fade in, by all means, you can choose fade in, but in this example, I'm gonna turn it off. And I also want to hide all of these bars until they're animated. In other words, when someone opens this page, I don't wanna see the bars until the user experiences to open them. So I'm gonna click hide until animated. Now let's have a look. If I click the EPUB preview window to preview what we've done so far, you can see that the bars come in as we set them up to fly in from the bottom. But of course, we don't want them to fly in from the outer part of the page. It just doesn't look good. I want this to almost appear that it's coming out of the line, the hairline there that you see at the bottom of the bar graph. So I'm gonna close this and let's go back to our layout here. Now, before we go any further, I do wanna mention that oftentimes if you're setting an animation to multiple objects in a layout, they may not come in in the order that you want. To ensure that they do, let's open the timing panel. I have mine open here. And again, you can go to window, interactive and timing. With the timing panel, just ensure that they're in this order from one to six. If you see that it's one and then six comes in, just move six to the bottom. It should be in this ranking order, one through six. Pretty straightforward. Okay, I'm gonna close that and let's go back to our animation here. I'm gonna open my layers panel for a sec and let me show you this. So I have five layers here and the ones that we wanna focus on right now is bar graph, which is basically the six bars in our bar graph and then white frame. I'm gonna click on the white frame layer. There's nothing on that layer right now, it's empty, but I'm gonna click on the rectangle frame tool. I'm just gonna move this animation window off to the side and then position my page like so. I also wanna make sure that I have my guides on or I'm in the normal screen view, that'll show my guides. And then what I wanna do is create what will become almost an invisible frame that will match the white background of my page. And this will primarily serve as a placeholder frame that the bar graph bars in my chart here will appear from. Let me show you how this works. So I'm just going to draw out a frame that goes from that guide that I've placed there right to the side of the page, the right side of the page, and then just release like so. I'm going to adjust that. So I'm just gonna click on my selection tool and make sure that the top of that snaps to the bottom of the chart. So let me move in a little bit closer here. And I just wanna ensure that that line, this hairline here is still visible, which it is, okay? And then I just wanna give this a white fill color. So go to your swatches panel and make sure you're on the fill and just give it a white fill color. Great, now, not only will the bars in our bar graph fly in from the bottom, but they'll fly in from the bottom behind this shape that we created here. Now with this shape selected, go back to your layers panel 
and let's just lock it. This way we're not moving it when we're adjusting the bars in the bar graph and adjusting the animation. Now, if I preview this again, I'm gonna click on the EPUB preview window and have a look. The bars are flying in from the bottom behind that shape and it looks as if they're appearing from that hairline that I've placed there. Let's go back and that's good. That's working as intended, but what if you want a little bit more control? What if you want to press a play icon to have those appear in sets of two? You can see in my layers panel here, I also have play icons and close icons. Now I've already placed them in the area that I want and I'm gonna focus on play icons first. Now basically what I'm gonna do is convert these into buttons and these buttons will control each set in my bar graph here. Let me show you how this works. For this next step, we'll need to use the buttons and forms panel. I have mine open here and I'm going to group it with animation and move it down below. Of course, you can always go to window, interactive and buttons and forms. Good. I'm gonna click on this first play button. Let me zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better. Let me tuck that back, perfect. So this first play button or icon, I'm gonna convert that to a button by clicking the type drop down and choosing button. And I'm gonna call this play one. That'll be the first play button. And in the actions here, I wanna choose animation. And in the animation drop down here, I wanna choose bar one. By the way, I went ahead previously and renamed each one of my bars in my layers panel. And they're called bar one, bar two, three, four, and so on. Let's click on that button. And now that we've added our first action, we have to add another action. Because as of right now, when we click this play button, it's only going to play bar one. So we need it to play bar two as a comparison in this chart. So just click animation again. And in the animation drop down, we want bar two. Now what I like to do is also give this a rollover appearance. I'm gonna click on rollover, then double click that icon. Now these are vector. If you import this as an image, you won't be able to do this. So copy your icons from Illustrator and paste them directly into InDesign and you'll be able to edit them as if they were live in Illustrator. I'm gonna change the color to this lighter green here and then go back to its normal appearance. Let's do the second set here. So I'm gonna click on this second button and under the type drop down, let's choose button and this will be called play two. The event will always be on release or tap. The action again is animation. And in this case, we want to play bar three, go back to actions and add another animation. And let's play bar four, click on rollover, double click that play icon, go to your swatches panel and choose this lighter green color, click back on normal, put the swatches back and let's do this third play button. Click it, type button, play three. Action here is animation. Under the animation drop down, we want bar five. Click the plus icon again here, add a second action of animation, and this will leave on the bar six default here. Let's click rollover, double click, go to swatches, give it the green, light green color and then go back to normal. So you can see I have my rollover and normal appearance as I toggle between the two. Now that our play icons have been converted to buttons and we've added the actions to open our bars in this bar chart, let's focus our attention on the close icons next. So go back to your layers panel and let's turn on close icons. Now for the time being, we can turn off play icons because they're kind of getting in the way there. So let's click on the first and we're going to repeat the same process, only we're going to be reversing the animation. Let's click on type and this again will be button and let's call this close one. Under the action, again, it'll be animation and we want bar one. And in the options here, instead of play, we want reverse. Let's add that rollover effect to keep consistent with the play icon. So green and then 
Click back on normal. Good, let's click on, actually we have to add the secondary animation. See how it's easy to kind of bypass that? So plus icon, animation, and we want bar two. And under the options, let's choose reverse. Good, now we can move on to the second close icon. Click it, under the type, choose button. Let's call this close two. Under actions, let's choose animation. And under animation drop down, let's choose bar three. Let's add a secondary action of animation. And under the animation drop down, we want bar four. Go back to three and choose reverse for the option here. And let's do the same thing for bar four. We want to reverse both of those animations. Click on rollover, then double click to drive into it and choose the lighter green and then click back on normal. Let's click that third icon here, the close icon and under the type again, this will be button and let's call this close three. The action here is animation again and the animation is bar five and the option here is to reverse that animation. So just think of reverse as actually just closing it. Under the action, let's add a secondary animation. Let's leave it on bar six, but make sure you change it from play to reverse. Click on rollover, double click, swatches, light green, and then click back on normal. One important step here is I don't wanna see these close icons. You don't wanna see the close icons until the play icons have been closed. So let's select all of these and let's hide all of them until they're triggered. Great, so I'm gonna go back to my layers panel. Let's turn on play icons. Play icons and close icons have all been set. They've all been converted to buttons and we've added actions to open or play and then reverse after the fact. I'm gonna hide close for a sec here. And what we have to do next is add a show hide buttons and forms action so that when we click the play icon, the close icon will appear. So let's click that first one and under the actions, let's add show hide buttons and forms. So what do I want this to do? Remember, I'm clicking that play button. So I want that to be hidden. And when it's hidden, I want close one to appear. Remember everything marked with an X is just being ignored. So you don't have to hide or show any of the other buttons that you're focusing on for each set. So let's go to the second play icon here and add another action of show hide buttons and forms. And we're focusing on the number two now. So when we click play two, we wanna hide it. And in turn, we wanna show close two. Click on that last one action of show hide buttons and forms go to the very top and let's hide play three and in turn show close three good we've added the show hide buttons and forms action to the play icons now we have to do the same for the close icons now again this may seem like a lot of steps and sure it is but the end result will be rewarding trust me so i'm going to click on that first close icon and here It'll be show hide buttons and forms. And when we click the close, we want that play to reappear. So we're gonna show it and in turn, hide close one. Click on the second close button and under the actions, show hide buttons and forms, show play to and hide close two. One more to do here, so go ahead and click it. And in the actions, it's show hide buttons and forms. And we want to show play three and hide close three. So let's go ahead now and turn play icons back on. Those are all set. You just wanna make sure that the play icon is above the close in your layer stack here. That's important because it may throw off when you're opening and closing it. So just make sure that play is on top of the close. Good, I'm just gonna tuck that back and there's one more thing we gotta do here actually. So I'm gonna click on the first one here and go back to your animation. Click on bar one and in the events here, do you see this? It says on page load and on release. 
Well, we don't want this to be on page load because we've already set the button action. So go ahead and uncheck on page load. And you can do that to multiple objects. So click on the first, hold your shift key and click on the others. And then just make sure that you uncheck on page load. Now they're all set to on release. Now we could test this out. And if I open it in my EPUB, you can see that none of them appear until I click on that first one. And then you can see I can click on the second and the same thing happens. And third, and we can close it. Ah, you see how it didn't go all the way down? We'll fix that right now. Unless of course you wanted it to be this way, but let's say you wanted it to go back to its normal appearance. Here's the trick. So if you click this and we want to adjust the motion path here. So you can see down below, I've created this guide. What you wanna do is just drag the endpoint of these guides. You may need to use the direct selection tool, hold your shift key and click it, and then just drag it. You can hold shift while you're doing this so you're not shifting anything as well. So basically what we wanna do is just drag this all the way to this guide here, okay? And basically what you're doing is you're just extending the length of this motion path. So just drag it all the way to the bottom. Same thing with these ones. It's probably better to do it when you're zoomed out. Click the bottom, hold your shift to grab that anchor point and then drag it down. Same thing. And I'm just doing this quick. You would take your time in doing this, but basically draw a guide at the very bottom, even on the pasteboard here. And this way you know that they're all going from the same distance. Great, let's go ahead and preview that again in the EPUB preview window. And have a look, if I play the first, play the second, and then the third, go ahead and close the first, close the second, and close the third, and you notice that because we adjusted that motion path and extended it to that guide that we created, now the bars in this bar graph are hidden. So there you go. Your infographics don't have to be boring anymore. Thanks for watching. And if you want more videos just like this one, check out the playlist right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.